It is Sunday, August 25th, and after a very quiet period in the tropics, it looks as though we have at least two areas of tropical activity that are likely going to form into tropical cyclones within the next seven days. The first one is going to be a lot more imminent, and it stems from this area of low pressure currently situated over the Bay of Campeche. This low is likely to strengthen it into at least a tropical depression, but more than likely a tropical storm as it continues to move westward towards Mexico. And the second feature has not been plotted on this map yet, but we do have a very strong tropical wave over western Africa, and long-range model guidance is showing that this will develop into a tropical cyclone within the 5-7 to seven day period over the central Atlantic. The latest tropical weather outlook from the Hurricane Center is giving the Bay of Campeche area of low pressure a 60% chance of tropical development within the next 48 hours, and this is the highest development potential the Hurricane Center has given this system so far. And the Hurricane Hunters will be headed into this area of low pressure later this afternoon to determine whether or not it has become a classified tropical cyclone. Elsewhere this afternoon, you can see that there's not much happening in the tropics, at least at the moment. We do have a weak tropical wave out across the central Atlantic. No development is expected from this feature, but more importantly, this is the second and more robust tropical wave starting to exit the coast of Africa. It has not been highlighted by the Hurricane Center, but I have a strong suspicion that this is going to change over the next 48 hours. As we look into the southwest Gulf of Mexico using the latest visible satellite animation, you can see that our disturbed area of weather is coming together quite nicely this afternoon. You can see more convection continuing to develop near what appears to be a low-level surface circulation and it's becoming very well defined on the most recent frames and as you can see on the enhanced infrared imagery we have a lot of convection and it is centered near the center of circulation so this area of low pressure is rather organized and you can see on the water vapor that conditions are pretty favorable for intensification all the way up until the time the center of circulation moves inland we don't have much in the way of dry air across the Bay of Campeche or southwest Gulf of Mexico and it also looks as though that there is a rather decent upper level ridge which is helping to mitigate the vertical wind shear in the area. Now we don't have many surface observations to determine if the low pressure is well defined at the surface, that is until the hurricane hunters fly in later this afternoon, but we did have a microwave satellite pass taken of the disturbance and it looks like this was a couple hours ago and it wasn't very revealing imagery because we don't see much in the way of banding surface features now this could have very well changed since this image was taken and it looks like it has based on trends on the visible and standard infrared imagery so I am rather confident that the hurricane hunters will find at least a tropical depression later this afternoon additional evidence also comes from the nearest Mexican radar site and since the radar site is still far removed from the center of circulation it's nearly a guarantee that the mid-level rotation is being picked up here aloft so this is not quite representing what is at the surface but it's still an indication that we have at least a very vigorous mid-level vortex and it wouldn't take much at all for the mid-level vortex to spin down closer to the surface if it hasn't done so already. This is a look at the latest spaghetti model plots and you have a nearly unanimous consensus with a landfall well to the south of Tampico, Mexico within the next 24 to 36 hours. And this is also good news because it's not going to have much time to develop over the very warm waters of the western Gulf of Mexico. So we are looking at nothing more than a minimal to moderate tropical storm landfall. So this is going to primarily be a heavy rainfall maker. And luckily this one has been very easy to forecast and that is thanks to this very powerful mid to upper level steering ridge that has been centered over the central plains for the past week or so. And this is resulting in above normal temperatures for the central United States. But it's also helping to keep the tropical mischief in the Gulf of Mexico suppressed well to the south and below Texas. Now as we turn to the eastern Atlantic, more specifically between the coast of Africa and the Lesser Antilles, a lot of people have been wondering where has the tropical activity been, especially considering that so many of the parameters going into this season were expected to support above normal tropical cyclone activity. And as we begin with the latest index of sea surface temperatures between the Lesser Antilles and coast of Africa, we don't really see much in the way of extreme values. It looks like they have been near average. So if we were to go by sea surface temperatures alone, you should start to see an uptick in tropical activity during the mid to latter half of August, especially when you take note of the vertical wind shear values over the past few months, especially beginning in July. We have seen below average vertical wind shear values, which is to be anticipated when you have a cool bias La Nina season, which is what we're in. But as we can see here, the main detriment to activity has been the lack of vertical instability. Throughout the entire season, the deep tropics has not seen above average instability so far. And this is thanks to a lot of dry air intrusions. 
And as long as the Saharan air layer, which is all of that African dust that is coming off the coast and spilling into the Atlantic, that's really helping to put a damper on convection. And without convection and thunderstorm development, you're certainly not going to see much in the way of hurricanes. But we are in a period of transition out across the deep tropics. There is one factor that hasn't been very favorable for development in the Atlantic so far this season, and that has been the Madden-Julian oscillation. It's been fairly weak all year, but we're starting to see a ramp up in activity thanks to the MJO. It started out across the western Pacific with several tropical cyclones, including a couple of typhoons that made landfall across eastern China. We've also seen a couple minor tropical developments in the eastern Pacific already. And as you can see, the favorable phase is starting to work its way into the western half of the Atlantic Basin, including the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean. And it just so happens we're about to see tropical development in the Bay of Campeche. And all of this activity is spreading eastward into the central and eastern Atlantic. This is today's ECMWF forecast of the Madden-Julian Oscillation from August 25th through September 8th. And as you can see, we're starting off in Octant 8, and it's slowly moving into Octants 1 and 2. And all three of these phases are favorable for Atlantic tropical activity, especially once you start into, to get into Octant 1. And that's exactly what nearly all of the European ensembles are indicating over the next 10 days. So as we venture into the eastern Atlantic, we see our first tropical wave moving west-northwest, and it's being inhibited by a lot of dry air. And you can make this out even using this imagery because you see a lot of stratocumulus clouds. And this is your first indicator that there is a lot of dry, Saharan, and stable air that is impacting the wave axis. So we're not expecting much in the way of development from this one as it continues to move off towards the west-northwest or northwest. However, this first initial wave is very important in that it is helping to break up the Saharan air layer out in front of this more robust tropical wave that is starting to move just to the south of the Cape Verde Islands. So it's going to have a little bit more in the way of moisture to work with, and it's also moving west at a lower latitude, which is also going to help enhance its chances of staying together and potentially even developing into our next tropical storm. It is really interesting to see the forecast evolution of the 700 millibar theta E forecast from the GFS model. And what this helps to show is where the pockets of moisture and unfavorable dry air are going to be located. And you can get a general idea as to what is happening just by looking at the initial time frame. This is the first tropical wave. You see a lot of moisture embedded within it, and it's a very high amplitude tropical wave. And then right behind there, this is the next one that is about to exit the coast of Africa. In between, we do have a narrow pocket of dry air directly over the Cape Verde Islands, but it's not significant enough to really put a damper on tropical development. And as we go into the five to seven day period, you can really see that the Atlantic tropics start to get cranking here. This is the African wave, the one that is still not quite over water. But as we go into day seven and day eight, the GFS is really starting to crank this one up. And we have yet potentially another system starting to move off the coast of Africa. And as we switch over to the latest sea level pressure and precipitation forecast from the most recent 12Z run, this is the afternoon Sunday run of the GFS model. And this is the most bullish model run so far of this 2013 Atlantic hurricane season. Here comes the African wave. And as we go into day five through seven, it really starts to get cranking. That's at least a tropical storm on the verge of almost becoming a hurricane, as you would interpret this on a more dynamical global model. And here comes the third potential system, because we already outlined the one in the Bay of Campeche. This is likely to develop within the next 24 hours. I'm pretty confident that this will be our next Cape Bird system. And here comes the third one coming off the coast of Africa, as we mentioned, by day seven or by day eight. Now, of course, as soon as we get multiple tropical cyclones that are ongoing across the Atlantic Basin, the big questions are going to be, where are these systems headed? So as we start to look into the long-range forecast, this is the 12Z GFS 160-hour or 162-hour mid-level steering. You can see both of our tropical cyclones in the central and eastern Atlantic now on the map by this time. But more importantly, we do have ridging out across the central Atlantic, although it's not very strong. And we also have a secondary ridge that is still over the central and southeast United States. In between, we have troughing out across the western Atlantic. And if our first tropical cyclone develops into a significant hurricane, the tendency will be for the hurricane to feel the effects of the troughing. And the troughing will help to steer the system to the north of the Caribbean and eventually out to sea to the east of the eastern seaboard of the United States. This is the 216-hour forecast. You can see our storm is starting to lift northward. Between the gap here in the ridges, this is where the troughing is still located. 
And this type of pattern, if it were to verify, would imply little to no threat to the United States and possibly even little to no threat to the Eastern Caribbean. But it would also be highly foolish to take this model and just run with it because anything beyond five to seven days is going to change a hundred different times in these forecast models. They barely pick up the correct pattern three and five days out into the future. So you best believe that the forecasted pattern out across the western Atlantic is going to change quite a lot between now and nine to ten days out. Also, for one of the very few times so far this season, we have a developing model consensus. Here's a look at the most recent Canadian CMC model run. You don't see much going on within the first three to five days, but as we go into day six and day seven, here comes our first tropical system to the east of the Lesser Antilles. It's at least up to tropical storm intensity by this period, and here comes the next tropical wave already starting to get its act together near the Cape Verde Islands. Even more telling is the most recent ECMWF model run, and keep in mind the European has been very conservative this year. It really has not picked up on much if any tropical development so far this season, and for that reason it has missed quite a lot of our tropical storms so far. Now keep in mind we haven't had a full-fledged hurricane yet, so that is to the advantage of this model. Now as we go into 72 and 96 hours you can really start to see our initial tropical wave to the west of the Cape Verde Islands. And from then on, it really starts to get cranking day by day. And as we go into days 8 through 10, you can see that we have at least a tropical storm sitting just to the northeast of Puerto Rico. Now, it's really not seeing our second tropical wave just yet, but that could change at any time. But we have an almost unanimous consensus between the GFS, Canadian CMC, and European model that we will have a tropical storm at the minimum here near or just to the northeast of the Lesser Antilles within the next 7 to 10 days. So we haven't had many in the way of videos so far this season from us here at 28storms.com, but that can be blamed partly to the lack of activity to really talk about across the Atlantic. So as things start to pick up as we go into late August into early September, you can expect more updates, discussions, and especially more videos here at 28storms.com. So please follow us on the website along with facebook.com slash 28storms for rapid updates across the deep tropics.